Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, this time for an introduction to buffer calculations. For copies of the pages and papers I'm referring to and using in this tutorial, please make sure to check the video description for links before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. I would also appreciate that if you found this video helpful, you give it a like before you go. Now, if we delve into module five of the OCR specification, looking for buffers, then we find a buffer solution described as a system that minimizes pH changes on addition of small amounts of an acid or a base. But what lots of people still struggle with, even after they've covered this content in a classroom, is if I was to look at a buffer solution close up right now, what would it be? What's inside the solution? What's the setup present there? Well, I'm gonna start this tutorial with a quick look at that, and then we're gonna delve into the different types of buffer calculation you can be presented with in an examination. So here what we have are two common examples of weak acids that have come up quite regularly in OCR examinations. We've got ethanoic acid and nitrous acid. A weak acid buffer, and we're gonna stick with weak acid buffer examples as those are the kinds that you encounter at A-level. A weak acid buffer contains excess amounts of both weak acid and its sodium salt. So not just any sodium salt, the sodium salt of the weak acid. For instance, ethanoic acid has the sodium salt of sodium ethanoate. That contains the carboxylate ion ethanoate, which you'll recognize from module six if you've done that yet. Another example of a weak acid that's come up twice in OCR exams is nitrous acid. The sodium salt of nitrous acid, you wouldn't be expected to know the name of this, but if they used it in an exam paper question, it wouldn't be too shocking, sodium nitrite. But we don't use nitrite very often at A-level at all. Now let's concentrate on the example of ethanoic acid and see what a buffer solution setup looks like. A buffer solution contains the ethanoic acid and the ethanoate ion just here, and we have an excess amount of both. And that's because the weak acid equilibrium that would naturally occur because of the ethanoic acid has its position well to the left-hand side so we've got lots of this, lots of our ethanoic acid, and we've added a separate source of the ethanoate ion. So it hasn't just come from the equilibrium. It hasn't just come from the partial dissociation this time. We've added a separate source of the ethanoate ion by adding that sodium ethanoate. So it might look like all we've got is just a traditional weak acid equilibrium, but actually it's a little bit different because of this excess of the ethanoate ion or any other conjugate base ion, depending on what weak acid buffer solution you're looking at, we have an excess of it because we've added some from an additional source. That's gonna change the Ka calculations that we're going to use. Yes, it's a weak acid, so I still want to use Ka to find out the pH because I'm gonna need this H plus value, but this time we're not gonna use H plus squared when we use the Ka expression. The reason we did use H plus squared previously in weak acid calculations is because the numerator here of H plus and the conjugate base, in this case, the CH3COO minus, that ethanoate ion, they have the same concentration because their only source in a weak acid solution is from the dissociation of this weak acid. However, now, since I have an additional source of this conjugate base from the sodium salt of the weak acid, I can no longer make that approximation. Let's see the equation in action. I've taken this question from the OCRA 2017 paper one examination. And the question has tasked us with essentially proving that the setup a student intends to use is going to create a buffer solution with a pH of 4.50. Make sure you go to the 2017 paper one from the OCR spec to check this question out for yourselves and have a good look through because it's got more than one section to it. I believe this is actually part C. So going through the question, let's see what we've got. Student plans to prepare a buffer solution that has a pH of 4.50. So we're going to prove this. 
and the buffer solution will contain ethanoic acid, just like one of the examples we were covering a moment ago, and sodium ethanoate. Then we're told that the student plans, in order to make this buffer solution, to add together a mass of the sodium ethanoate and a volume with a concentration for the ethanoic acid. These in a sort of template of a regular Ka expression would be A- and HA respectively. Show by calculation whether or not the student's experimental method would produce the required pH. You'll notice here I've highlighted up as well, show you're working, because they did expect to see some use and rearrangement of the Ka expression. So, I have my Ka expression, and I'm definitely not going to square the numerator because I know that that's only an approximation I can make when I'm looking at weak acids by themselves outside of the context of a buffer. And I've got a little extra bit of information here. When we've got buffer solution calculations and I do my rearrangement of the Ka expression, here it is. I would almost suggest, by the way, learning this equation as a separate equation since it's so common that buffer calculations come up. You'll notice here that I've got two concentration terms, one on the numerator, one on the denominator. And as a result, the volume, since they're going to be in the same total volume, the volumes are going to cancel out. So what I can use, as you can see here written in the red, for the HA and for the A-, minus, so that's for the ethanoic acid, the HA, and the ethanoate ion here, the conjugate base, the A-, minus, I can either use concentration values or mole values. Mole values being quicker to perform in the exam. But you've just got to be really mindful that it's consistent. It's not one and then the other, it's both of the same. So either use two concentrations or two mole values. Have a play with the numbers yourself and see what works for you. It's your examination. You've got to make sure you do this the way that suits you best. So here what I've done is after I wrote out my rearranged version of the Ka expression, I've put my numbers in. And this is typically how I would approach this exam question. Here at the top, I've used the concentration and the volume information for the ethanoic acid, the HA up here, to find out the number of moles of the ethanoic acid. And down here, what I've got is the mole calculation for how many moles there are in 9.08 grams of the sodium ethanoate. In the blue, you can see that I've just labeled up what these numbers are. That's nice and clear to an examiner. If an examiner saw this, they'd know exactly what I've done, what I'm doing, it's very clear. Make sure that your working out, especially in questions where they say to show the working out, is kept as clear as this, because you don't want the examiner to have to go digging to find out what you've done. Demonstrate what you've done to them. I just want to make it really crystal clear here as well. You'll notice I've labeled up in the green highlighted bit here, the CH3COONA as the A minus. I can appreciate that's got a different formula. So the CH3COO minus would be A minus, but with the sodium on, the moles of them are the same. So what I'm saying is, if I can find out the moles here in 9.08 grams of the sodium ethanoate, that's going to be equal to the number of moles of the ethanoate ion, which I'm going to be using in my calculation. Because for every one of the sodium ethanoates I have, I have an ethanoate ion. I have my H plus value down here then from this rearrangement and putting the numbers through. That's 3.16 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And my final pH then is going to be 4.50 if I do a negative log of that hydrogen ion concentration value. Now the alternative kind of setup that you may be given to calculate the pH of a buffer solution isn't actually going to be the sodium salt being added directly to the weak acid. Sometimes what they do is use an excess of weak acid and add that to something like sodium hydroxide. If you add a base to an excess amount of the weak acid, you're going to have a solution which has some weak acid left over and you're going to have created some sodium salt. So in scenarios like that, you're going to have to do a little bit more mole work at the start to find out how much weak acid you still have remaining and use that as your quantity up here and how much salt you have created by that base reacting 
which will become your number down here. So it is a little tricky to do that style of mole calculation associated to a buffer calculation, but as long as you can identify from the exam question what your two components are, you'll know what method to use. The sodium ethanoate is definitely not a base. It's the sodium salt of your weak acid. So look for this common formula. And that's my indication here that I'm not considering any moles in excess or how these two would react with each other. They are just going to be in the same solution side by side. If, however, I had, let's say, ethanoic acid and sodium hydroxide, there's my clue that I'm meant to be looking at a reaction of the two because we know that an acid and a hydroxide are going to react together. Here's another example from the 2018 paper one multiple choice section. This is very similar to the previous question, except this time because it's multiple choice, you're only going to get one mark. Make sure that you check this question out and others from the 2018 paper one from the OCRA specification. Multiple choice questions are great practice because whilst you might think, oh, they're only a small proportion of the paper, much like this one, they ask you to do more than one mark's worth of effort to get the score. And so they are still very good practice when you're revising for the bigger questions. They're often very unstructured as well, which means you've got to figure out the stages for yourself. Now, despite being a multiple choice question, my advice to all students studying A-level chemistry is that you show some working out. And you can see at the bottom down here, I'm gonna take you through my working out for this question. Once I've gone through the start of it with you, it is very important that you show some working out, not because it's gonna gain any credit, but you need to be sure about your answer. Since examiners will often play a game with the numbers they put in this space to deliberately lure you in with a value that looks like or is part way through the method you're using in full. So I recommend that you always show some working out so you can be absolutely certain of what's going on. Here we're told that a buffer solution is prepared by mixing an amount of propanoic acid with some sodium propanoate. Now I can see that propanoate and propanoic acid so I am absolutely certain that this is the sodium salt of my weak acid. So I know I've got a buffer solution anyway, because the question has told me, but that has backed that up. I'm also aware that as you can see here, and as I mentioned on the previous slide of this, we've got our sodium propanoate going to be equal in moles to the amount of propanoate ions in solution. And so I've got that discussion just here. I've got the Ka for propanoic acid, and I've just been asked to find the pH of the buffer solution formed. Once again, I'm going to use moles here for the HA and the A minus because it's a bit quicker, and especially considering this is a multiple choice question, I don't want to dawdle. So Ka equals H plus times A minus divided by HA. You'll notice here, different from my previous working out, I'm not actually writing the propanoate ion out, mainly because it's quicker to do it this way. And since it's a multiple choice question, I'm not gonna get any credit whatsoever by making my layout clear to the examiner. I'm still gonna do so because I still think it helps me look back on my answer and be certain, but I'm gonna use these abbreviations just to make my life a little quicker in the exam. So I rearrange my expression. Remember what I said before, I recommend you learn this rearrangement as a separate calculation since it is so common. I've got my Ka given by the question. And here, once again, just like last time, I'm just gonna put in the mole values of my HA, which would be my propanoic acid, and my A minus, which remember is the number of moles of sodium propanoate, which is the same as the number of moles of propanoate ions. Once I chuck these numbers in, I get an H plus ion concentration of 8.8 .8 times 10 to the power of negative six, and my pH calculation of minus log gives me 5.06 as my pH value. That means the answer to this multiple choice question was going to be C. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can check the video description for links to the files that I've mentioned and used in this tutorial. And there are links on screen now for other videos related to module five content for OCRA. Until next time, 
Happy revising.